There will almost certainly come a time in your project or your career where you need to mail a DNA construct to a collaborator. Now currently this involves taking an epi tube, putting it into some dry ice in a big styrofoam box. And the problem with this is that in addition to it actually being expensive to mail this thing, you have to then deal with a FedEx account or a DHL account and it's just another hurdle you don't need. But it doesn't have to be this way. In fact, simply using a piece of Whatman paper uh, and a few microliters of your DNA you can mail it off anywhere for the price of a postage stamp. The first step in mailing off some DNA to a collaborator is to spot it onto a piece of filter paper. Now in this case, we're going to use some standard Wattman paper that everyone has in their lab. Now I'm going to be mailing off about a microgram of DNA, which in my case is about five microliters of my stock. You just want to place the DNA on the paper, and then while it's wet, draw an outline of the DNA, because once it's dry, you won't be able to know where it, where it was. At this point, I also like to label it with the vector that I'm sending, and that way the collaborator knows that that spot corresponds to that plasmid. Once you've spotted the DNA onto the filter paper, give it about 10 minutes on your bench top to dry off. Once the sample's dry, you're now ready to take the filter paper. You can fold it up, put it in an envelope, and mail it out to your collaborator. A few days later, your collaborator is going to get your filter paper in the mail, and they're going to need to now extract the DNA back for use in their own experiments. Use a clean pair of scissors to cut out the circle you drew earlier. Then place the filter paper in an epi tube with 20 to 40 microliters of water. After about 15 or 20 minutes of the filter paper sitting in water, now you want to take out the filter paper. But first, it's important to spin it down so you get all of the DNA solution you can out of the filter paper. After about a quick 20 second spin at 14K, you're ready to take the sample back out and grab your filter paper out of the sample. Okay, so you're ready to take the filter paper out. And you can discard this. And the resulting solution contains your DNA and is ready for transformation. Now the great thing about the filter paper trick is that you can put a lot of discrete constructs in one filter paper and mail it off. So next time you have to send some DNA to a collaborator, give some filter paper a shot. It's going to save you a lot of time, a lot of money, and that painful hunt for the right size styrofoam box.